So, how's it going? I got as much sleep as I could Saturday after putting out that exhaustive report on NVIDIA's latest shenanigans, which I really do recommend you should check out on Moore's Law is Dead. No one wants to miss this if they plan on trying to get Ampere graphics cards this year. Since then, nothing's really changed from what I reported, which in a nutshell is that, like Turing, NVIDIA is binning the best dies for their Founders Editions at launch, but this time it sounds like they're really binning them. And additionally, those coolers on the Founders Editions are legitimately very good, very impressive, and very expensive. NVIDIA is accepting lower margins on their Founders Editions at the $700, for example, RTX 3080 MSRP than they ever have before, below AMD margins. And it's because they're not making that many of them. They expect them to sell out, and they expect you to be forced to buy marked up AIB models. And those AIB models if they're anywhere near the MSRP, should perform about 5% worse or be about $100 more expensive. And since that report came out, yeah, guys, it just sounds more and more confirmed to me. I mean, it was exhaustively researched, but it's always good to hear more afterwards that backs up what you said. You know, Video Cards is reporting that the FE models are definitely clocking better than the uh, AIB counterparts. And additionally, since that article has gone up, I've had AIBs and system sellers all over the world actually reach out to me and say, yeah, the MSRP that we're going to be forced to sell these AIB models for is way above what the MSRP usually is. Effectively, the cheaper AIB models will be about $720 to $780, it sounds like, and the premium models should be north of $800. Sorry, guys. These are Turing prices. But there is more I actually want to talk about, and it's regarding information that I mostly already told you if you watched that mega video I did. A lot of people skipped it, but maybe go back and watch that if you want to know what graphics cards are coming out over the next two years. But do note that if you watch that video, you'll have to put up with me miss saying Murthy's name like a frickin' idiot. Nonetheless, part of that information is what was coming out from the new Quadro 6000 and below Ampere Professional Graphics Cards. And now, I've got pictures and even more information on them and even some hints of what the Titan could be. Before I get to that, I actually do need to put up this sponsored ad. Today, I would like to proudly mention that Skillshare is a sponsor of this video. Skillshare is an online community with thousands of inspiring classes for creative and curious people like me, and maybe even my dog. She's pretty smart. Good girl. Sign up for Skillshare to obtain a membership with meaning that allows you to explore new skills, deepen existing passions, and get lost in creativity. There are thousands of classes to choose from to enhance your creative skills. Subjects include e-commerce courses, graphic design, and even underrated skills like brewing great coffee with Michael Phillips. I find that one probably the most useful to me with how much I've been drinking lately. It's curated specifically for learning, meaning there are no ads, and there are always launching new premium classes, so you can stay focused and follow wherever your creativity takes you. It's less than $10 a month for an annual subscription, and for a limited time, use the link in my description to get a free trial of Skillshare Premium Membership. Sign up for Skillshare today, a wonderful online community for following your passions and creativity. I tried to have fun with it. But anyways, let's get to the information you want. Full GA102. And like I said, this comes from people testing the Quadros right now. And just to be clear about that, I have full pictures on all sides of what they look like. They're pretty interesting. I can't show you any close-ups of the cards, although I have put a couple pictures on Twitter. But yeah, on the back of the card, there is an opening for the blower fan, which I find really fascinating. This is something kind of like what we saw with the GTX 295, at least from the looks of it. Although the Quadro version this time looks much more open than the 295 and much higher quality, just more pleasing to look at. But I can't show you any close-ups of the card yet. That will be coming soon. Anyways, these Quadro 6000 cards that I have seen have 10,752 CUDA cores, only about 2%, a little over 2% more than the 3090, but then they have 48 gigabytes of normal GDR6 memory. Now, some people said, oh, it doesn't need that much bandwidth, it just needs, um, you know, a lot of RAM for the Quadros. That's 
somewhat true, but there are actually a few reasons why they wouldn't go with GDR6X. Uh, the first one is, honestly, guys, GDR6X is pretty experimental. I knew that early Ampere samples were just using GDR6 as I covered. You know, GDR5X that was used in NVIDIA's Pascal lineup was announced many months before it came out. So this is something that seems to have been somewhat rushed into the graphics cards. They're not even clocking the 21 gigabit per second memory at the full speed in the 3080 and 3090. That could be because the memory controllers can't handle it that well, but it's also because I believe, at least I'm under the impression that this early GDR6X uses a boatload of energy. Look, Ampere uses a bunch of energy for a bunch of reasons. It has so many CUDA cores packed so tightly together. But additionally, GDR6X sounds very power hungry in its current iteration. So that's part of it, I actually believe. But speaking of experimental, GDR6X has just come out. E error correcting versions of GDR6X are probably just not ready. So they, again, they have to use GDR6 in the quadros. I don't even think it's JDEC validated yet. GDR6X is in many ways experimental. Now, the other interesting thing about these Quadro cards was they had an 8-pin on them, which someone on Twitter, link in the description to that person, identified is an existing 8-pin model that can support over 300 watts. So it sounds like they don't even just have a compact 12-pin coming that can support over 600 watts. They also have an 8-pin they're using on the Quadro models, and those cards will ship with two 8-pin to one 8-pin converters. And so, yes, these Quadro cards use around 300 watts, and they had to. You know, NVIDIA <laughs> may be able to get gamers, as I've said before, to swallow 350 to 400 watt cards. But they're not going to get professionals to. These need to slot into the existing systems that were built to support 300 watts. And so that's what NVIDIA is doing with these cards. But that brings us to the Titan, right? NVIDIA doesn't really need to do that with a Titan. They could push this thing just as hard or harder than the 3090 to keep the performance crown if they need to. And I do mean if they need to because I believe NVIDIA is waiting to launch the Titan until maybe Q1 or so as a response to possibly a biggest Navi graphics cards. Which let me say that. I am basically under the impression, and again, this is not 100% confirmed. You don't need to share it saying Tom said it's this, but I'm kind of under the impression the 384-bit model of the ADCU die that was tested has been canceled. But as I've covered before, again, in this video, I do know that AMD's got HBM models coming that they don't want to sell to gamers. So whatever biggest Navi is, I think it is now just coming in an HBM iteration and coming in quarter one. And so I believe NVIDIA is holding this Titan option in case they need a counter like a uh, an AMD Titan competitor. Yeah, I know that it AMD's vehemently said, and my own sources have said this too, that they don't want to bring any HBM models to gamers, that it's just not worth the money. But, you know, they said that about Vega 20 as well, and then the Radeon 7 came. Yes, without RX branding. They kind of argued it was a replacement for the Vega Frontier, but... I don't know. I guess I, what I'm saying is you can just never rule out that AMD may bring the top HBM card to some sort of semi-professional or ultra high-end gaming market. And if they do, NVIDIA needs to have a counter. So let's talk about what that counter would probably be. When it comes to a Titan version of the Q6000, I think it is most likely that they would put GDR6X on it. Now, I'm not 100% sure, maybe they wouldn't. And if they don't, then I would just say, yep, look, the Titan is not for gamers this time for sure. It's just for semi-professionals, just get a 3090. But I see no reason why they couldn't and then push this thing to like, a, I don't know, right? A 370 watt card. So if they did put GDR6X on it, Keep in mind that the 3080 and 3090, though using 21 gigabit per second memory as video cards confirmed and Micron stated, it's not clocked that high on the cards. There's some room for them to use the same memory on the Titan and clock it higher for about 10% more bandwidth. 
And in fact, I've also heard that 23 gigabit per second memory is coming from Micron by quarter one as well. So they actually have a few options. They could do full 21 gigabit per second memory and either 24 or 48 gigabyte flavors for the Titan. I'm not saying they do both. I'm saying they'd pick one or the other. Or potentially, if this launched, say, five months from now, they could maybe use 23 gigabit per second over a 352-bit bus and make a Titan 44 gigabytes that slots in at like three or $3,500 below the Quadro 6000. For those that would like the extra power usage, would like the professional drivers, but don't necessarily need the ECC memory, and they just want it to run things faster. And faster it would, by the way, because... From what I'm seeing, these Golden Sample Quadro cards actually have boost clocks a bit above the 3090 despite having the extra SMs, about 7% faster. So yeah, 2% more SMs, 7% faster clocks. I do think they could bring you something that's the usual 7 to 10% faster. You know, like, like what we've seen from the Titan Pascal and the Titan Turing that was legitimately faster than the 1080 Ti and the 2080 Ti below it. A 10% better card with a boatload of memory launched if they need to beat some sort of Titan-like card from AMD in quarter one. That's kind of what I expect is going on. And that's just about all I have to say about it. I expect to learn much more over the coming weeks. And so, yeah, just keep in mind which things I said in this video are confirmed, like that picture, like that I have more pictures coming, and that I do know exactly what the Quadro 6000 is, but that most of the Titan stuff was speculation based on people acting like NVIDIA wants, not necessarily has to, launch a consumer version of the top Quadro 6000 die, the full GA102. And I guess the only other thing that really comes to mind is how funny this is, right? Like, we, I remember when we used to be talking about how NVIDIA may be saving a $700 to $1,000 flagship to beat AMD if AMD has something killer coming. And now we're talking about, unfortunately, $3,000 flagship cards competing with each other. I don't know. There's not really much anything we can do about it. Gamers voted with their wallets over and over that they would like higher prices. And so higher prices is what you have if you want the best of the best now. But... At the very least, rest assured that I am very confident that the cards below $1,000 will be far more competitive between AMD and NVIDIA this fall than they have been for many years. So at least the overwhelming majority of gamers anyways have a lot to look forward to. And I will be covering all of it in the coming months with more and more videos and podcasts. Remember to subscribe to Moore's Law is Dead on YouTube, ring the bell button, and if you have the extra money... Consider supporting me on Patreon to get exclusive ad-free access to multiple podcasts, including exclusive ones every week, and the ability to submit reader mail. And as always, thank you for watching, and enjoy this crazy week of tech news coming.